Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffrey Bershaw from Vaunted Destinations. So glad to have you all attend our uh, What's Hot in Singapore uh, webinar. We have uh, Simone Wong. She's down in LA with the Singapore Tourism Board. Uh, and uh, she's going to you know, kind of show you what's amazing and uh, you know, what your clients should see and do while they're in Singapore and all the important sites and, and uh, cultural aspects. Uh, this wonderful panel uh, here that you see with the four different pictures. Uh, you know, we have uh, two shots of, of uh, the, uh, the port there, the marina there uh, in Singapore up at the top left and right. And down at the bottom, on the right bottom corner, we have uh, a picture of the private night safari. Uh, this is, they deem themselves the wildest night spot in Singapore. Uh, it, it's actually, I, I really, I uh, haven't had a chance to go here, but it really sounds like a, an amazing place. Uh, they got a tropical rainforest, and the, and it kind of takes you through seven different uh, um, um, regions of the world as far as the you know like tropical, subtropical, and all of that uh, with wild animals uh, as well. So really exciting. And then the uh, the picture on the bottom left is the Adventure Cove Water Park. Uh, and these are both things that you can uh, uh, Avanti can provide uh, your clients uh, traveling to Singapore, but. Um, Quickly, first off, just for those of you who aren't that familiar with Avanti uh, in our Asia program, uh, this is the cover of our uh, brochure for 2017-2018 uh, product line. Uh, and just so you know, if you don't have the brochure, you can get online and order brochures. It's right under uh, Agent Resources. So uh, you know, AvantiDestinations.com. Uh, in the in the homepage there is Agent Resources, and it says Order Brochures and Download Flyers. Uh, you can do that there. Uh, we have a lot of new destinations. We brought on Singapore, uh, it was probably about a year ago, uh, and uh, we've got seven new destinations uh, besides that uh, for 2017-2018, uh, and uh, you know a lot of them are uh, you know not as popular. The big four certainly: uh, China, Japan, uh, Thailand, and in um, in Vietnam, but also. Um, you know, a lot of options as far as, you know, extensions or uh, com combinations because that's really what we're good at. As an FIT tour operator, you know, we're able to provide all of these different services. Uh, and so it's, you know, really fantastic opportunity for your clients who are interested in Singapore uh, and the rest of Asia. Uh, we do use, uh, often we'll uh, use or provide Singapore as a stopover as well. Uh, and that's with uh, Singapore Airlines here. As you can see, a free stopover in Singapore, a great way to connect uh, your clients through Southeast Asia. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on as we go through this presentation. But here's all the different preferred partners that we work with in the airlines. Something that I always like to mention is, is that we do offer 10% commission on the base fare. So uh, you know, if you're using Singapore Airlines and it's you know, uh, business class or, or first class, uh, you know, there's some great opportunities there uh, for your client, for your clients, as well as for your uh, commission. Pre and post cruise, uh, you know, Singapore is a, a very popular pre and post cruise destination. Uh, but as you can see here, we've got a lot of a lot of different options uh, for your clients traveling uh, to Asia uh, and doing a cruise. Uh, and as you can see, these aren't all just cruise ports, uh, we do a lot of shore excursions as well. Uh, so something to think about is, as uh, you're getting your clients prepared and, and working with Avanti to uh, you know, build out that itinerary. And I think it's something uh, very important as well as you know, using Singapore as a, um, you know, as a stopover, uh, you know, and taking advantage of our skill set of, of really being able to connect the dots. Uh, you know, we're able to provide a, a lot of different opportunities for you and your clients. Uh, but with that said, uh, we're going to go talk about Singapore and focus on that. And I'm going to hand it over to Simone Wong. Simone, it's all yours. Thank you, Jeffrey. Hi, greetings from the Singapore Tourism Board. My name is Simone, and I want to thank you for taking the time to learn more about Singapore, a little gem in Southeast Asia. In this short presentation, I will provide you a refreshed perspective of Singapore and take you on some of the beaten track experiences. Singapore is an island nation in Southeast Asia, located just the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula and Malaysia. It's 
Indonesia. Even though the entire country is just half the size of LA, you'll be amazed by the diverse experiences this island state has to offer. Originally founded as a British trading post in the early 1800s, this thriving island quickly grew to become a magnet for new immigrants from China, India, and the Malay archipelago and beyond, all come in search of a bright new future. These traces of Singapore rich colonial past and early migrant legacy can be found everywhere throughout the island and truly created the diverse multicultural makeup of the population that still exists today. Singapore has experienced tremendous growth in its short history as a young nation. In just 50 short years, Singapore transformed itself from a sleepy fishing village into a hotbed of innovation, design, and entrepreneurship. Singapore's biggest attraction is the fusion of the country's rich tapestry of culture, blending harmoniously into one. Take a look around, and you will see a multicultural mosaic where diverse places of worship, cuisine, and language coexist harmoniously despite their differences. In the early days, the British decided that migrants of different ethnic cities are to be housed in three separate areas within the island. This early housing policy resulted in the birth of what is known today as our cultural enclave and remain an important part of Singaporeans' life. These neighborhoods are like life museum for visitors to experience. The most vibrant of these neighborhoods is Little India. If you want to know how Indian people eat, play, shop, dress, celebrate, and worship, a visit to this neighborhood will give you a first-hand experience of what real life is like for the Indian population living in Singapore. If this sounds like an ideal day out, there are two more of these cultural enclaves to explore, Chinatown and Kampong Glam, which is the Malay district. Almost 80% of Singapore's population live in public housing in residential area called the Heartlands. Few tourists venture out to the Heartlands, and it remains one of Singapore's best kept secrets. Some of my favorite Heartlands neighborhood are Chiang Baru and Jalan Besar. This is where you get a glimpse of the local way of life in Singapore. You can visit the wet market selling inexpensive fresh produce to the local community. Or one of my favorite experiences is the local traditional coffee shop known as Coffee Diam. That dot neighborhood and serve uniquely Singaporean coffee that is walk with butter and strained through a cloth. Another local favorite is kaya toast, which is toasted bread served with kaya, a traditional jam made from coconut and egg. Now that I have wet your appetite, let's take a deeper dive into the much talk about culinary scene in Singapore, which is the food capital of Southeast Asia. If you only have time for one meal in Singapore, you have to check out our hawker center. There are more than 100 hawker centers in Singapore, with the biggest housing 260 individual food stores. These hawker centers are open as food centers that serve a variety of fresh traditional and food and dessert. Prepare to order. Here you can find master chefs at each store who spend the entire life mastering one particular dish, such as the savory char kway teow, fried noodles, or Hainanese chicken rice. Hawker centers have an important historical and cultural significance in Singapore's history. Being a migrant country, hardworking locals were too busy to cook. Therefore, eating affordable food at Hawker centers was and still is a way of life for families in Singapore. 
Hawker centers are where you can enjoy a good quality three-course meal, appetizer, entree, and dessert for approximately U.S. $10. And today, the Hawker centers are celebrated as an authentic culture experience. In fact, the humble Singaporean Hawker centers are such a source of inspiration that Anthony Bourdain has announced plans to launch the Bourdain Market in the heart of New York City which is an international food market model of the Singaporean Hawker Center concept. Singapore inaugural edition of the highly regarded Michelin Guide was launched last year. And in a note to the diversity of Singapore's food culture, not one, but two humble street food stores made their debut in the highly coveted Michelin ranks and a Kranakan restaurant serving cuisine uniquely to Southeast Asia was recognized for the first time. And Continental of, of Cuisine will be happy to know that a growing number of world-class celebrity chefs has been setting up restaurants in Singapore, such as Joel Rupushan, Tetsuya Wakuda, and Daniel Bullard, just to name a few. Singaporeans are not only passionate about food, they are equally passionate about nature, incorporating green space and natural elements throughout the island has always been an important part of urban planning. Singapore prides itself on the way the beauty of nature harmoniously and visually coexists with modern development of the city scape, making it a truly vibrant garden city. The most striking icon of Singapore's spirit of sustainability is, God, is Garden by the Bay, a breathtaking green oasis overlooking Marina Bay. Two huge futuristic dome structures rise above gardens by the bay. These are the flower dome and the cloud forest, which are cool conservatories that serve cutting-edge technology for better energy efficiency. These domes are home to 160,000 plants, comprises more than 200 species from every continent except Antarctica. The flower dome is officially the world's largest glass greenhouse as named by the Guinness Book of World Records. And the cloud forest is home to the world's tallest indoor waterfall. The most iconic highlights of Gardens by the Bay are the distinctive super trees, which has been compared to the scenery in the movie Avatar. The super trees feature sustainable functions like collecting rainwater and generating solar power. These trees a 9 to 16 story tall vertical garden that features a variety of plants growing inside of them, as well as an area walkway for visitors. And atop the largest super tree is a restaurant in the Shane, which offers an unforgettable treetop dining experience. A testament to the country's reputation as a city in a garden is the Singapore Botanic Garden. Established in the 1800s, it is the country's first UNESCO World Heritage Site and features the National Orchid Garden, which boasts the world's largest orchid display. The orchid is the national flower of Singapore and is a source of great pride. There is a full-fledged biotechnology lab in this garden that has produced unique orchid hybrid with over 1,000 species and 2,000 hybrids of orchid on display. The splendor of these gorgeous bloom is absolutely a sight to behold. And be sure not to miss the Celebrity Orchid Garden that acknowledge VIPs and celebrities like Queen Elizabeth II, Jane Goodall, and Michael Kors by naming a hybrid orchid after them. No overview of Singapore would be complete without mentioning that 
It's one of the most modern cities in Asia that is known for forward-thinking design, innovation, and dynamic architects. The island city has reinvented itself in recent years with new marvels of modern construction, creating a stunning signature skyline to call its own. A feat of impressive engineering and sheer aesthetic triumphs as Marina Bay Sands. The mammoth complex dominates the entire Marina Bay front area and has its significance and has and put its definitive stem on the Singapore skyline. It comprises a hotel, celebrity restaurant, convention, shop, theater, an art science museum, and an event plaza. The structure three sloping hotel towers soar six hundred and fifty feet from the ground to be linked at the top by an extensive sky park, which gives 360 degree view of the city skyline and has large gardens, an observating observation deck, and an awe-inspiring infinity pool. It's no surprise that the building was featured in National Geographic Megastructure Documentary TV series. The Astronet Singapore World Class Performing Arts Center has a very unique design and has been nicknamed the Duran, as the twin structure resembles the spiky tropical fruit that is unique to this part of the world. Another engineering trait is known as the Helix Bridge, which is a pedestrian bridge that resembles the structure of DNA and is the world's first double helix structure. Last but not least is the Park Royal on Pickling Hotel with a facade that resembles layers of paddy fields and the hotel's interior make you feel like you have entered a tropical wonderland where greenery flourishes throughout the entire building like the modern day interpretation of Babylonian hanging gardens. So in summary, I hope that through this presentation, I managed to show you why Singapore is the perfect first stop to Asia. Firstly, for the first time traveler to Asia, Singapore is an ideal place for you to dig your toes in the water where you will feel welcome and more at ease even while away from home. Secondly, Singapore's small size is actually an advantage that you will be able to experience a concentration, a concentration of experiences. And you have no trouble moving around, even getting public transportation. Finally, Singapore offers great value for money. And it's more affordable than you might think. In this one city, you have the chance to dive into authentic sites sound and taste of a variety of culture from colorful street vendors and traditional delicacy to trendy boutiques and modern dishes. Singapore's culture diversity is unmatched. In closing, I would like to thank you for your time and I hope to see you and your clients in Singapore very soon. So now Thank you again, and now I'm going to pass the time over to Jeffrey to talk about um, the packages. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Simone. Um, as you can all see, uh, Singapore is a, a, st a stunning place, uh, definitely um, you know, worth uh, many visits. Uh, I know that, that I've, I've been there several times, uh, and it's just a great I call it a city, but it, it is an island city state. Uh, and you know, another view of the of the super trees here at Gardens by the Bay. Um, you know, walking along there would uh, be a you know a staggering experience uh, for anybody. 
the thing that I always want to mention when talking about Singapore is uh, Singapore is also a fantastic family destination. Uh, you know, there is, um, you know, some of you may know the, you know, there's a lot of, of uh, amusement parks uh, or, uh, you know, experiences there. Uh, there's, you know, uh, beaches and, uh, you know, and, and all the different uh, little enclaves, districts. Uh, that you know Simone covered, uh, so you know getting around, having a cultural experience uh, is is very easy to do, and it's a completely a foodie destination as well. Uh, I think I always gain, you know, five ten pounds whenever I go to Singapore. Um, so because uh, I eat my way through, uh, you know, it is a tropical destination as you can see here. I just wanted to show this really quick, uh, and, and talking about it, but. Um, you know, you see Singapore here and Kuala Lumpur uh, and Malaysia is not very far away, but, you know, an easy gateway to the rest of, of Southeast Asia. Uh, and, you know, uh, booking after booking that I see that includes Singapore is exactly that. Um, you know, so just something to think about there. Um, you know, English is, you know, many people speak English. Uh, it's, you know, as you can see, one of, one of the four national languages. Um, and you know it's it's easy to get to via uh, Singapore Airlines. So um, you know we kind of treat it as a uh, city stay. Uh, so you know as an FIT tour operator, we can combine and add lots of different tours. Uh, we have you know um, you know several properties uh, that that we like. Um, and just to start off on the left there with the four star Scarlet. Um, you know, it's a in a, it's a boutique style uh, uh, property. Um, you know, it's um, uh, Singapore's first uh, luxury boutique hotel, and you know, it's in the um, you know the area where there's lots of uh, clubs and restaurants and and, and shops. Uh, and then the Carlton, kind of you know, moving up just a little bit as far as price point is concerned, uh, is you know a, a, a wonderful uh, a property. But this is a large property. Uh, where the Scarlet only has 80 rooms, the the Carlton has 940, and you're going to see these are you know all the most of the properties are you know uh, wonderfully wonderful decor, lots of style, uh, good sized rooms uh, as well, and, and wonderful expansive lobbies, uh, and you know the Carlton definitely has uh, that in spades, and then the Fullerton. Uh, is is another one. Uh, this is a five star property, the Carlton and the Scarlet four star, um, and you know it's got a it's kind of a neoclassical architecture, uh, and it was built in 1928. Uh, so, you know it's got it's you know it's still a large property with with 400 rooms, uh, gorgeous decor as you can see here. Uh, it's you know, got a lot of style and, and, and class, and then going over to the uh, the Raffles Hotel, the 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 Coupe de Gras. Uh, you know the place where the Singapore Sling came from, and that bar. You know, a, a classic historic uh, property, uh, colonial style. Uh, you know, it does have a really nice gardens uh, at the property. Something to think about. Uh, and uh, you're talking about 103 rooms. I do want to note, however, that it's going through a complete refurb uh, here. Uh, and they're expecting to be, it's going to be happening here pretty soon. You're going to see most of it is going to be happening in, during the summer months. Uh, you know, we're still in uh, peak season uh, for Singapore travel-wise. Uh, and, uh, and then in 2018, during the peak season, it will uh, reopen. It'll be closed for, you know, like a month and a half, two months. And then it will reopen uh, and uh, be completely refurbed. So uh, certainly, your clients can get there, uh, you know, in a in, in short order. Uh, and then through the fall, uh, it will be closing it out. And then when they reopen, um, uh, we'll be able to book your clients in there again. So, but you know, it is the, uh, the historic, uh, uh, the, the most historic property uh, in Singapore. And as far as experiences are concerned. I'm going to go uh, actually from right to left here. You know, you've heard a lot. Simone already talked a lot about the gardens by the bay. Uh, this is what we call this majestic gardens in Lion City, uh, a nickname for Singapore. Uh, it's just the name of the tour, but it really is uh, a private, uh, ex you know, experience uh, through the gardens at the, uh, by the bay. So, uh, you know, you, you can just your clients could just go there, of course. Uh, 
um, but you know, it, having a guide to go to the different uh, areas, uh, definitely going to the the orchid gardens and the uh, would be a, a wonderful experience with a private guide. Uh, and then uh, explore Singapore by bumboat. Uh, bumboat is a uh, historic. Um, you know, way that pe people got around uh, in along the Singapore River uh, and uh, you know around the, the area. Um, so it starts off in a bum boat and then uh, going in the marina and along the or excuse me along the river and then going in in a private tour uh, through Singapore uh, and uh, ending up in in, in China uh, uh, town. Uh, and then um, the Sea Aquarium. This is really is just an uh, an entrance. Uh, but you know, definitely something great for, uh, for families. Uh, and then, you know, I think that you know it's really a, a, an amazing uh, aquarium uh, and uh, probably one of the, the the most amazing in the world. Um, so you know, I think it's a, a great experience, especially for families. But you know, I definitely would go uh, even if I was with just a couple or or some family and friends. And then the Singapore cultures experience. You know, this is um, more. Focused on the culture, you know, so you're, it's a kind of a journey, if you will. Uh, it is private, uh, and so you're going to the different regions. Your clients will be going to the different regions uh, throughout Singapore, uh, kind of getting behind the scenes to a degree, exploring all the, you know, the the, the private nooks or unknown nooks and crannies of uh, of Singapore's uh, ethnic heritage, which, as you have learned, is is various. So uh, just a couple other sites I did mention. Uh, there's beach, uh, and there you go with uh, Sentosa Island. Uh, Tooth Relic uh, is uh, one of the temples there. Uh, since predominantly Chinese, you're going to have some pretty strong Chinese architecture in there. But there's also, you know, some uh, you know British architecture as well as, as uh, you know uh, some colonial architecture. You know, it's, you know, there's a, a melange of of cultures there. So. Uh, Lots, lots to see and do. Um, you know, we have our must sees. You, you know, we've already uh, uh, shared them with you. Uh, you know, I talked a little bit about the Raffles Hotel and the Long Bar and the Singapore Sling. Uh, definitely do that. And you know, going atop the Mandalay Bay, as Simone said, is a, 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 a stunning, stunning experience, uh, not to be missed, uh, even if your clients aren't staying there. So easy four-day trip. Um, you know, uh, four nights, three nights would be a minimum, uh, in my humble estimation. Uh, and I think that you could really experience Singapore in, in four. But you know, certainly if your clients only have two and it's in a pre and post cruise environment, uh, that's definitely doable uh, as well. So uh, we're going to get to some of the questions. Um, and this is a, a good question to start with because I didn't, and I didn't talk about it much. Uh, someone did a great job in talking about the the Hawker Center uh, centers, uh, I should say. Uh, and Simone, uh, where are they? Um, where are they located in in Singapore? Oh, the Hawker Centers are located everywhere in Singapore. You can yeah. find it in the residential area that we call it Heartlands, or you can even find it at the um, business district in the downtown area. So it's easy to get um, to all this hawker center and to get great food. Yeah, and I, I do want to quickly mention one of the things that blew me away the first time I went to Singapore. I was actually visiting a friend and uh, who was living there at the time uh, and working. And, uh, her kitchen wasn't that big. <laughs> there wasn't much of a kitchen there at all <laughs> in her apartment, and that's because she ate out all the time, and that's part of the culture, uh, and that's the you know that's how the the hawker centers came about, just as Simone said uh, earlier. So it's it's pretty interesting. Um, you know, uh, one question is there a, a, for you, Simone? Is there a place on your website or? Um, you know, maybe you could, um, could we possibly provide a link for people to uh, access images so that they can promote Singapore as a destination, either on their websites or in their offices? Yes, for information on Singapore, um, we, you can check out yoursingapore.com and for mm -hmm. videos and images, um, you can check out stbcontenthub.com. Okay. Uh, a good a good question here as far as uh, Sentosa Island is concerned. Um, you know that is 
it, it, there's a variety of things that that uh, the ways that we could kind of put it together, um, but it's a really a, a half day uh, uh, option uh, for us. Uh, but you could uh, certainly make it a full day and, and lounge about and, and take it easy with your clients. So just a little bit of information there. There's a lot to do. Um, you know, I don't think you could ever get bored uh, in Singapore. Uh, there's fabulous shopping as well. We didn't really talk about that uh, too much, uh, both for you know some of the ethnic um, stuff, but also you know international designers. Uh, you're in see, in Singapore, uh, seeing more and more of that. It is an international destination. Uh, people from all over the world uh, uh, live there as well uh, as the major three major uh, ethnic uh, groups. You know, this is. Uh, I think that we kind of touched upon uh, some of this uh, earlier, uh, Simone. Uh, but some of the people are asking, you know, as far as you know, like, is you know, the water safe to drink, and you know, and, and stuff like that. And I, I really want, and you can answer this as well. But I really want to uh, to share with everybody. This is a very modern city. Uh, contemporary life, um, you know, they're they're connected to uh, the world. Uh, it's you know, uh, I wouldn't call it Western, uh, but uh, certainly the uh, the amenities uh, are are uh, very contemporary and, and very modern. So, anything you want to add to that, Simone? Yes, the water is um, definitely safe to drink, and um, you can drink it straight from the tap. Um, if you wanted to um, buy Water water is also available, so um, yeah, you have other options, but it's definitely yep. um, safe to drink. Yeah, and I think that you know, it was, you know, I, I, it was just one of the things that hit me. My, my the first time that I went to Singapore was was you know how um, um, modern contemporary life was there, even though it's historic as well. Um, so I uh, you know I uh, just gonna kind of answer once again. Um, you know, there's some good questions there as far as you know is is Raffles Hotel a worthwhile stopping into for a Singapore slang you know all these things uh, you know there's so much to do and I think um, you know uh, that that's kind of what makes it a, re a place a great place to revisit uh, as well and just you know uh, if your clients you know once they go to to Southeast Asia they're going to want to go back and um, you know, in Singapore, make always makes a great first place or last place uh, to to go. I will recommend though that if there's if there if your clients are ending their vacation on a on a beach destination, you know, just get them on a plane and get them back home. Uh, that you know, these, the, Singapore is a vibrant city and very much alive. Uh, so all of that rest and relaxation uh, is uh, you know going to dissipate to a degree. But you know, you could definitely can use it as a post trip as as well. Um, you know, and I, we have another question here as far as as money is concerned, um, and I think that's a it's a uh, you know it's it's always a good question uh, to to answer. Uh, you know, um, the what's the the currency, uh, Simone? The currency is Singapore dollars. Yeah, yeah, and, and so. You know, so how would you know? Would you recommend they you know they get on the plane, get off the plane, and and go to an ATM and just you know uh, take out some cash? Well, they can do that, and the other way is that um, you know travelers can actually go to a money exchange at the airport or even in downtown area and in shopping center um, to change their money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Currently, you know it's. The exchange rate is about one U.S. dollars is to one point four Singapore dollars. Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, I'm you, know, you can also use credit cards, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So if you get that, you know, no international fee. If your clients get that no international fee credit card, it's uh, definitely uh, something to think about uh, as well. Now, as far as seasons are concerned, uh, Simone. People, you know, it's a, a very good answer, uh, question to, to get answered. Um, is you know, there's a rainy season and then there's a dry season, or is it kind of the same all year round, or what? Singapore, because of its location, is um, it's 
summer all year round. It's like in Florida. If um, you know, mm -hmm. like if I I have to um, compare it to a city mm -hmm. um, or state, and that um, the rainy season is usually in um, late November, December. However, mm -hmm. um, travelers should not worry too much about it because um, if they go to a shopping area, um, many of the buildings are actually linked, you know, um, with an underpass mm -hmm. from one building to another. So mm -hmm. um, they can actually enjoy a whole day of shopping without getting wet. So monsoon season's in November, December? That's correct, usually. Yeah. 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 And you get, there's a little bit in the spring as well, isn't there? Mm, not yeah. that much. Okay. Good, yeah. good, good. So all year, uh, all year round destination, um, you know, it, it's not going to rain 24 hours a day and even during the rainy season, right? No. You, you, you would yeah. be surprised how connected um, is Singapore, you know, like um, within the downtown area. So. Absolutely, you can enjoy the city without even worried about the weather. <laughs> you can not even go outside. You can just <laughs> walk around. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, funny, funny. Uh, and you know, I think you know you. Uh, there's there's always concerns as far as you know c connectivity. People don't want to be. You know, they want to make their Facebook posts with their selfies or uh, Instagram or what have you. Uh, and you know, Wi-Fi is is Wi-Fi pretty much available uh, throughout yes, it Singapore? Is. Yeah, yes, so, it is. Yeah, you're just as connected as you could be anywhere else. Of course, you could get an international. Your clients get an international plan too, and and uh, and they'd be uh, connected via uh, you know cellular data uh, too if they wanted to. But uh, all the hotels uh, offer uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, you're even gonna you know most of the shops and stuff. Uh, and, and and restaurants have Wi-Fi in them as well, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's pretty ubiquitous, even uh, much like the states. So uh, something to think about there. Uh, and I think with that, we've pretty much answered any questions. Any parting words that you wanted to to uh, say, Simone? Um, I just wanted to say, come and experience Singapore for yourself. I mean. What is good is that for American passport holder, you do not even need a visa to get to Singapore. Literally, you can actually just buy a ticket and enjoy, go to Singapore and enjoy your holiday. Yeah. And so, um, yes, we can't wait to uh, welcome you and your um, visitors, your travelers, and your families to Singapore. So come and check us out. I, I do want to know, it's maybe very obvious, but you do need a passport. <laughs> Your clients need a passport of course, to travel of to course, Singapore. Of course. But you're yeah, connecting <laughs> Singapore with uh, with Thailand, you know, no visas required, easy peasy. Uh, there's only a couple of, of destinations in Asia actually that require a visa, uh, and uh, you know, so even before your your clients get on the plane, and, and that information is available uh, via our website as well at avantidestinations.com. Uh, as you uh, many of you know, our phones are very busy. Uh, you can always email us at request at avantidestinations.com. Uh, we'll get back to you within one business day. Uh, and then uh, you can also reach us at 800-422-5053. Uh, the best times are uh, 9 to 11 and uh, 2 to you know, 1.32 to, to uh, 4 o'clock as well. So uh, just something to think about there. Uh, if you have any questions or you need additional information, you can always reach us at request of Auntie Destinations uh, uh, or online. You can book your clients uh, Singapore uh, and you know uh, connections all the way through Southeast Asia online uh, with Avanti as well at avantidestinations.com. So with that, thank you all for attending. Hopefully you got a lot of great information. Uh, and thank you, Simone and the uh, Singapore Tourism Board. It's been a great relationship, and uh, we're really thankful for it. So take care, everybody. Have a great day, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank Ciao. you, everyone. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bye. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.